Hi there, I'm Jenny from the Electric Quilt Company, and today I'm going to show you around our EQ8 quilt design software. Let's get started. When you open up EQ8, you'll see the welcome screen. EQ8 has three work tables. The first one I'll show you is the quilt work table. To get started, I'll choose design a quilt from scratch, and it will automatically switch me to the quilt work table. The tabs across the top of the screen help direct you in your design. We're starting on the new quilt tab here in the top left. On the new quilt tab, you get to choose the type of layout that you want to start with. For this first quilt, we'll stick with the basic horizontal layout. Next, we move to the layout tab, and this is where we can set the basic characteristics of our quilt. I'm going to change the number of blocks to five and five for horizontal and vertical. And under finish size of blocks, I'm gonna put a check here and keep width and height equal and change the size to 12 inches. The next tab is for borders. You can preview what these different border styles look like here in the ribbon, or you can choose the border style down here in the palette. I'm going to change the first border to a points out border. I'm going to use the little arrow here in the ribbon to find points out. And you'll see that changes the border around the quilt center. I'm going to adjust the width of that to four inches. And change the number of blocks in the border to five and five. So right now you'll see that there are three triangles pointing out. I'm going to change both of these to five, and now we'll see five triangles on each side of the border. I'm going to add another border, and here you'll see another border is added around the outside of that points out border. And this one I'm going to change to be a four inch wide border. And then I'm going to add one more border. This one I'm going to set so that it looks like I have my binding on my quilt. So I'm going to set it to be a mitered style border and I'm going to make it real narrow. So I'm going to take it down to a quarter of an inch so that it looks like my binding would when I, my quilt is completely finished. Now that we've got the basic settings of our quilt here, we can move to the design tab, which is where all the fun stuff really gets started. Before we start filling in this layout, Let's take a look at the block library. I can click the open library button here in the palette and the block library will appear. The block library comes with over 6,000 pieced and applique blocks ready for you to use. You also have the option of editing any of the blocks from the library. You could add seams or take away seams. Um, they can be used at any size in any quilt layout. Or, if you were on the block work table, you could draw your own original designs from scratch. I'm going to close the block library now and start filling this layout with blocks. Here in the palette, you can see the blocks that I've added from the sketchbook before we got started. I'm going to select this starry path block and I can click in a block space and it will pop into that place. There are also keyboard shortcuts you can use to make filling a quilt layout faster. If you hold down the control key or the command key on your keyboard and click on a space, it will fill the entire layout with that block. If you hold down the alt key or the option key, it will fill every other space in the quilt. So I have clicked on this chain block over here and now I'm going to move over here and I'm holding down my alt key and clicking and there you can see that it alternates that block in the quilt layout. Here I'm working in solid colors, but you can also color the quilt in fabrics. I personally like to start in solid colors and then play with fabrics once I have a quilt layout I like. I'll add fabrics in just a few steps. Once I have the quilt colored, 
I like to take a look at it without the patch lines on. So I'm clicking this button over here that hides the patch lines. And now you see that the patches don't have those black outlines around them. This gives you a better feel for what the quilt will look like when it's actually sewn. When you have a version of the quilt that you like on the work table, you can add it to the sketchbook to save it. You can add multiple versions of a quilt to the sketchbook too. It's a great way to keep track of how your design is evolving and it makes it easier to decide which idea is the one that you want to take to fabric and actually sew. Now I'd like to show you a few other quilts that I've already designed that I have in the sketchbook. I'm gonna click the view sketchbook button and here we are in the quilts section. At the bottom, you can see that I have nine quilts so far in this sketchbook. I'm gonna edit this one to the work table so you can see it a little closer. This quilt is a modern medallion design where I've supersized the block. In this quilt, that starry path block is 30 inches square and it's surrounded by borders of different sizes and styles. This next quilt incorporates blocks of all different sizes in what we call custom set. It's a blank canvas to design on. You can see that the blocks are not set in any sort of standard grid and they're all different sizes. Here, the Starry Path blocks range in size from 20 inches down to six inches. And the smaller Friendship Star blocks are three inches. If I turn the patch lines back on, you can see how this quilt would be pieced together. I'm gonna turn the patch lines back off. And while we've got this quilt on the work table, let's switch out the, some of these solid colors for fabrics. Earlier, I showed you the block library. Now let's take a look at the fabric library. I'm gonna click the open library button here in the palette and the fabric library will open. The fabric library comes with over 6,000 fabrics and you can also import your own fabrics. You could scan fabric that you already have at home or save fabric images from a fabric company's website. You can also add more fabrics to your EQ8 using our free fabric of the month downloads or our EQ stash add-on products. We're going to grab a collection from Andover for this quilt. So I'm going to scroll down and find my EQ stash online listing. And we're going to use the quantum collection. So I'm going to click on one and then say select all fabrics and then add them to my sketchbook. I'm going to close the fabric library. And now I can start switching out these solids for fabrics. Using the paintbrush tool, we can color one patch at a time. I'm going to switch to the fabrics tab here in the palette and scroll to the end to find the newly added fabrics. I'm going to select this one here. And if I click on this patch here, this one patch will color. Again, I can do that over here with this. There are also tools to make coloring a little faster. If I use the spray can tool, it will color all matching patches in one block at the same time. So if I click on this dark blue in this one block, both dark blues will change at the same time. You can also use the swap color tool to change all fabrics across the quilt at once. So if I wanted to change this white background to a darker color, I can use the swap color tool and it will switch everything at once for me. Now I'm just going to use the different fabric tools to finish switching out the solid colors for fabrics. When I'm happy with this colored version of my quilt, I can add it to the sketchbook. 
Now let's take a look at the printing capabilities of EQ8. We can continue to work our way across the tabs at the top of the screen and click the Print and Export tab. First, let's take a look at the yardage estimate for this quilt. In the palette on the left, click Yardage. Here in the Print Yardage Estimates window, you can choose the width of fabric that you're going to purchase. By default, it's set to the standard 44-45 inch width, but you can change it to other widths as well. Or, if you work mainly in fat quarters, you can check the box for fat quarters only. The seam allowance appears here, and it's set to the standard quarter inch, or you can type in a different seam allowance if you'd like. Click the Preview button, and here I'll zoom in so you can take a look at what the yardage chart looks like. You'll see the fabric swatches on the left, the number of patches that use that fabric, the yardage estimate, and then the collection and designer name and the SKU number. I'm going to close the yardage and then close the print window. Now let's take a look at what a rotary cutting chart looks like. First we need to choose a block, so I'm going to click on this little friendship star block. When it's selected, it'll have a green outline and you'll see the finish size pop up in a little box. I'm going to click the rotary cutting chart button. And here you'll see that same finish size is filled in for us. Again, the seam allowance is set to the standard quarter inch. And if I click preview, here's what the rotary cutting chart looks like for this block. You'll get a key block with each of the different patches labeled with a letter. And then down below, you'll have a cutting diagram for each of those patches. I'm going to close this. And now let's take a look at a foundation pattern. I'm going to click one of these smaller starry path blocks. You'll see it's a finished six inch block. So I'm going to click the foundation button over here. And in the foundation window, you can see that it's already sectioned and numbered for us. That's because it's a block from the library. But if you would like to change the numbering or the sectioning, you can do that here. I'm going to click the preview button. And here's what the foundation pattern will look like for this block. I'm going to zoom in. And you'll see that each patch is numbered, so you know the sewing order and each section has a quarter inch seam allowance around it. I'm going to close this and then close the print window. So now that you've gotten a good look at the quilt work table, let's hop on over to the block work table and take a look at what we can do there. In this video, I'll just show you a tiny bit of the possibilities that are available on the block work table. Here you can see there's a blank block ready for drawing, but let's take a look at that starry path block that we've been working with and see what we can do with that. I'm opening up the sketchbook and looking for that starry path block. I'm going to double click on it to edit it to the work table. And here's the block drawing. Let's say I want to do something like delete a few lines to make it a simpler block. I can use the pick tool and select lines that I would like to delete. I'm just clicking on a line and then hitting the delete key on my keyboard to remove it. After I'm done editing the block, I can go to the color tab and take a look at the way it's colored. If I don't want to make any changes, I can just add it to the sketchbook. Let's say I wanted to make another variation of this block and add some new seams. I can go back to the Draw tab, and using my Line tool, I can add additional seams to this block. Then move back to the Color tab, and color the new patches that I've created. And then add to sketchbook. 
Some really fun options that you can get into on the block work table come in the Create Serendipity options. I'm going to click the New Block tab and then click Create Serendipity in the ribbon. There are several different options here in the palette. The first one we'll take a look at is called Clip and Flip. Here are the blocks that are in the sketchbook. The first one is the original Starry Pass block that we've been working with. The buttons down here will give you different options. What that does is clips the block and then rotates it around in the different quadrants. When you see a new block here that you like, you can click Add to Sketchbook and it will add this new variation to the sketchbook for you to use in your quilt designs. I'm going to close this window and take a quick look at the kaleidoscope options create serendipity. Again, we're working with that starry path block and it will take a tile of that block and kaleidoscope it around. When you see an option that you like here in the palette, you can click add to sketchbook. And you can see how clicking on the different tile options here on the right changes the option here in the middle. I'm going to close this kaleidoscope window. And let's take some of these new variations that we've created and throw them into a quilt design. I'm going to click the quilt work table button. And there's the last quilt that we were working on. I'm going to click the new quilt tab. We'll just do a regular horizontal. And I'm not going to change anything with the layout and the borders. I'm just going to go straight to design this time. Click block tools and scroll down in the palette and find those new variations that we've created. And now I'm just clicking on some of these variations and throwing them into my layout. Remember those short keyboard shortcuts. If I want to set one block in the whole quilt at once, I can hold down my control key or my command key. And you can make really awesome quilts with just a few clicks. I'm going to add this one to the sketchbook. When you first get EQ8, you may be wondering how you get to know this program. And I want to show you quickly before I go all the help resources that are built right into EQ8. If I click the house here in the top left corner, we'll be back on the welcome screen. Here on the left, you can click on learn and it will take you straight to the learning resources that we have available for EQ8. We're also available for tech support via chat, email, and phone. Thanks for watching this demo with me. I hope you've enjoyed your little peek at EQ8.